All right, I found this online. Um, I'm going to have to um, look at more of the stuff here. This is by uh, Analog Devices, uh, www.analog.com. And uh, they seem to have some university that slash courses, electronics, electronics lab. They must have different labs and stuff. I'm going to have to check that out. Um, I don't know if you need to subscribe or whatever, but this, at least this particular paper, I'll try to put a link down below. Uh, this one was available on a Google search, and this is all about using the uh, 4007. And it's a great, you know, it's made for like the hobbyist, right? It's like here, you know, this is how you wire things up. Uh, it talks about the part and how it's complementary pairs. Here's how you make three inverters. Um, so that's really cool. And then it talks about how you might actually uh, measure this, the uh, performance of this part. They put in this 100 ohms here so you can measure the voltage across that to measure the current. When this thing switches, there's a current spike, um, as with all CMOS devices. So you can learn a lot about how CMOS works just by studying this. So here's a step edge, but here's the current spike. When it goes through transition, you get a spike in current. Um, yeah, it's got all kinds of really good stuff in here. Um, let's see here. Let me show you a couple cool things. So, making a NAND gate. Okay, so NAND is a AND gate with an inversion in the back. So how do you do an AND gate? Well, they're using two FETs in series. So it's this plus this in order to get the output, right? And uh, there's some other inputs and stuff here, but um, it, it shows you how to do that. So this is a NAND gate. Here's a, uh, here's an inverter. Uh, this is how to, let's see, still, talk, still talking about the, still talking about the NAND gate. Okay. Uh, uh, here is a NOR gate. So we see how we have two transistors. Either one can pull this low. So this is an OR function and an inverter. Um, so yeah, now they had one, uh, thing in here that sparked my interest. So we're going to do that today. Um, Let's see here, which one is it? Pages are stuck here. Uh, making, oh, here we go. Making a Schmidt trigger. Schmidt triggers are kind of interesting devices. So let's see how they accomplished a Schmidt trigger with just that many parts, right? Not many parts. Uh, so this is their diagram of a Schmidt trigger. Um, I'm going to redraw it because it's confusing the way they have it drawn here. But if you draw it the, the other way, you can see that it's just a string um, where it's just an inverter. It's, it's basically just an inverter, right? So it just has some extra transistors in it. And uh, the uh, string is used to set uh, thresholds and then the two extra transistors are basically emitter followers in a strange way. And by emitter following whatever voltage V out has, it feeds back into the string and changes the, uh, changes the switching uh, characteristics. So this, this thing's going to switch on whatever the, the gate to source uh, voltage is for those parts. It's going to be around four volts. Um, and so by modifying things, it's going to switch at different voltages and things. There's a description down here that says how it works, which is it's kind of hard to get through that language. But if you slog through it, you'll figure out how the thing works. Uh, but I think uh, yeah, this is how they wired it up. But yeah, let's go ahead and wire one up. <clears throat> so here's mine over here. So yeah, let, let's try it out. All right. I have it all wired up here. It's a big mess, but it is wired correctly. So I have, uh, uh, I'm using the generator right here to generate a ramp and the ramp goes in and that's on the yellow. And then the Smith trigger works on the cyan. So that's the output. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Um, it is, on the positive, it's triggering here and it goes low. And then on the negative, it's triggering down here. So the, there's hysteresis between that voltage and that voltage. 
Uh, we can show that hysteresis by turning on some cursors. Oops. Yeah, there we go. And so we can look at um, the voltage triggered up and the voltage triggered down. Yeah, it works great. So uh, I made some measurements on the oscilloscope so you can see how the thing is, is actually switching. Um, I've included a couple scope traces here that are a little bit confusing. Um, the voltage swings weren't as big as I expect them to be, but um, it gives you some idea that there is some voltages that are changing in the circuit. What I am, I'm monitoring, I'm monitoring the source follower on the top and the source follower on the bottom. And you can see that they are changing and that does modify the whole circuit. It's not as obvious as, <laughs> not as obvious as I hoped it would be for a teaching tool, but I've included it here for completeness. Um, but anyway, what I wanted to get across today though, was if you get one of these uh, 4007s, you can do all kinds of things with it. Not just a transistor, not just an inverter, not just an amplifier. You, you can do all kinds of things with it. Somebody, somebody online has a, uh, uh, something called the Lazy Beggars VCA. So I think I'm going to do a video on that. Uh, voltage controlled amplifier. It seems like a really, really, really simple one. We'll see if it works and it might be a great teaching tool too, but uh, at least today, yeah. See if you can uh, get a copy of this at, at, for the 4007 and read up on it. It's, uh, it's really interesting.